what does a wireless client, like a phone or laptop, whatever, what does it need to be able to be on a network? What things does it need? Like for, for that, like if I get a phone and I want to put it on the network, for that phone to be happy that it's on a network, what does it need? Now, when you answer this, think about the seven layers of the OSI model, okay? So what, what, does, what does a phone or laptop or any client need to be on a network? IP address, okay. Address. What else does it need? What, sorry? The recipient, Wi-Fi recipient. The hardware itself. The card. The card, yeah. Okay, so... You can say NIC for the phone itself. Yeah, but a phone would have a wireless card, so... Can you be more specific on what that wireless card needs to be happy? Sorry? Okay, it needs... It needs to see the RF. Okay, is that... That's a big one, actually. So it needs to see the RF. Um, what else does it need? Protocol. Sorry? Protocol. The wireless protocol. What it, the wireless protocol. As protocol. in, yeah, what, what do you mean, the wireless protocol? The application. The API requirement. They have to agree on the, the yep, OK. That says 802.11 standards. Okay, so we've got RF. We've got 802.11 is happy that we're talking the same protocols. Um, so we've got an IP address. Anything else that it might need? So if I have a phone and I've got the RF and I've got the right protocol, so I can handshake with it. Um, IP address, is there anything missing yet before we got to IP address? MAC address. Well, the phone's got a MAC address already. So, Radio. authentication. Okay. It has to, be, has to be allowed on the network to authenticate and in, in, have its encryption. Let's say that's happy. We've got an IP address now. We're happy with that. Anything else we might need? Well, just staying on authentication and encryption, how do we get that? How do we set that up? How do we make sure that that's correct? How do I make sure that that's going to have the right encryption? How do you set that up? Okay, that's one. You got, you can have on off server. Well, the other one would be a pre-shared key. Okay, so you have to have something that says this is the encryption we're going to use. Okay, so it could be a pre-shared key or it could be an off server. They both tie into the fact that you need some sort of encryption. Okay. So we've got encryption. We've now got an IP address, so they're a bit the other way around. Um, anything else we might need? Can, can I get to Google yet? What else do I need? What does the phone need? Get Yeah, well, yeah. That's the one. DNS. D DSL, right. DSS. I don't know. Okay, DNS. So let's say we're happy with them. It's, it, if you've got them, you're doing pretty good. Okay. So let's say a customer comes up and says, because <laughs> I'm going to pick on you because your phone's right there. I can see it. You've got a phone and they say it's a wireless device, but they, they can't get onto the internet. So the first thing they will say is the wireless doesn't work, okay? Because that's what they say. Because that's what they see. 
they see that's a wireless device. They see they've got no connectivity to some website. So they say the wireless doesn't work. So where do we start? I think the first thing we have to start is, is to really define what they mean by connect. If they say a client can't connect, what does connect mean? That is the fundamental question of any case where someone has a perceived wireless problem. When they say, I can't connect, and they always blame the wireless, okay? But how much of this is actually wireless? Oh, RF, that's, that's pretty wireless. Um, 802.11, that's wireless. Auth encryption, that goes with wireless, but it could also be radio server backend, okay? So you've got a little extra there. IP address and gateway, well that would come from some router. It's usually done in the back end from a corporate DHCP server that gives you an address. And same with the DNS, okay? So, first of all, to see if they can connect, layer one. What is layer one in a wireless network? You know layer one, the physical layer? What is the physical layer for wireless? The radio, okay? You're comfortable with that, even though you can't see it, doesn't matter. The RF, the radio in the air, is our physical layer. That is what we use to actually transfer information from one to another. That's why we have wireless networks. So, the first question is, is layer one there? Now, what are some examples where that layer one might be missing? What problems could there be with the RF layer? What sorts of problems could we have? The AP is down. So if the AP is down, there's no RF. How would the client connect? You can forget everything else. If there's no RF, you will not connect, obviously. Interference. What is interference? Because that's a tricky one. Another energy that affect your energy or another signal that can cause your signal yeah. ugly? That's right. Well, interference, by definition, to interfere with something means you're changing it. So the radio that we want to use is being interfered with by someone else. Now that could be more 802.11 networks, it could be that microwave oven, it could be my radio controlled quadcopter. Lots of things used, especially 2.4, because it's open to everyone. So there's all this RF energy getting around, so we might, we might struggle to see our access point. So the access point might be down, so we've got no RF. It could be uh, interference by someone else. It could also be this. The access point might not be down, but it might be broadcasting on a channel that we're not looking for. Okay? Now this is, this is common. Especially, I'll just bring up a little graphic for you. Just a minute. Just a minute. Right. This is the channel allocations for the 5 gigahertz band. Okay? Uni 1, Uni 2, Uni 2 extended, Uni 3, and also the last little one at channel 165, which isn't technically Uni 3, but it is part of the, the 5.8 gig ISM band. So they're all the channels we could ever use in 5 gigahertz. This band in particular, Uni2E, is and isn't supported all the time. Now, when I speak of Australia, we're allowed to use all those channels, okay? So if you have your wireless system, AP might say, okay, I want to use channel 100, okay? And it's transmitting on 100. It's beautiful. The AP's not down, it's up, and it's quite happy, and it's doing what it should. But let's say, your phone's moved, let's say your phone, <laughs> 
you want to join the network and you're looking for APs and you're looking, you're checking all those channels to see if there's an AP there you can join, okay? But what if you don't, your phone or whatever client might be the driver that's driving it, what if it says only scan this, this, and these up here? If you're not looking for channel 100, you'll go, I can't connect. I can't connect. But the AP's fine. And, and what is happening? Your client's just not looking there. Okay? There's lots of signal, and it's allowed to be there because that's what the country regulations say you can transmit on. But if you're not looking there, you will never be able to connect to it. And what might happen there, that same AP might also have a 2.4 gig radio. Okay? And you'll see that because we can see generally 2.4. And your client says, okay, I'll connect at 2.4. And you're going, why aren't you connecting at 5? But if you don't have 2.4, you say, why can't I connect at all? So layer, that's still layer 1. That's still, the R, that's still all about RF. And it sounds silly, but just because the AP is there doesn't mean you can see it. And there's no interference there. No one's interfering with that AP. We're just not looking for it. Does that make sense? Yeah? The other, the other thing, as we said, going on with interference, um, if, if someone else is using that, then we might struggle. If, if someone's got um, some video transmitter with higher power than our transmitter, we'll re really struggle to see ours. 